What is going on guys, Pat in the shop, and tonight I'm giving you the recipe for the YouTube 355, everything that went into it in one summary quick video. Let's check it out. So I, I've picked up a lot of new subscribers uh, from guys that have seen the, the YouTube 355 uh, on the Dino and Nick's garage, and I've been getting lots of messages on Instagram about it, about certain components that went into the engine. Uh, obviously, the, the, we're building the motor, it was over uh, quite a few videos. So I thought I would do a quick summary video of the build sheet and what went into this, how much power it made, NA, um, and, and the actual breakdown of the main components that went into this engine, because uh, it turns out a lot of you guys are, are looking to build similar combinations to this uh, as far as a, a budget small block Chevy. I don't know what you really call budget anymore with the prices nowadays, but this has some some pocket friendly parts. Uh, going through the build sheet, I actually didn't realize that it's almost like a it's almost like an advertisement for Summit Racing because it does have a lot of Summit Racing parts in it. Only because they do offer some budget friendly parts that you know are really good value. A lot of the stuff is is made in the USA, like the camshaft and stuff. So there's some some good parts in here uh, for guys that are looking to build on, on not a huge budget. So they, let me let me go through this. Uh, if you have any questions, well, you can comment. Uh, just see if you watch the video, and it, it should I should cover the main component. So let's uh, let's check it out. So first, the power with the EFI overall like peak power at 435 at 6300 RPM and 424 foot pounds of torque at 4600 RPM. Uh, this was with 36 to 37 degrees uh, ignition timing. Um, what's, what was nice about this combination is it idled with 15 to 16 inches of vacuum, which is really nice. So this is a power brake friendly combo for sure. Um, so it was ran on the dyno with inch and three quarter headers that Nick had, just dyno headers. They weren't real extravagant dyno, big dyno headers. They were just like regular chassis headers. So uh, you certainly, you know, if you were going to run big set of dyno headers, you, we could have probably saw a little more, more power, but the headers we used were realistic. And it was also ran with this water pump set up here, uh, which will rob a couple horsepower. So safely, you know, this is a 425 to 440 horsepower engine, you know, give or take, and uh, about four and a quarter foot pounds of torque. Um, the nice part is it is a hydraulic cam and it revved out to uh, you know 6300 RPM was peak power with both the EFI, we ran it with EFI and carb, um, and they made very similar power, and that was with uh, the Atomic 2 EFI and a Holly uh, 750 XP carburetor. The engine block. The engine block is just your regular 880 Vortec late model engine block, one piece rear main seal, deck, board, honed, hot tank, sonic tested, new cam bearings and frost plugs installed. And I also did screw in oil gallery plugs because I am running a hot, high volume pump. Something I always like to do is the front plugs do the screw in uh, gallery plugs, as you've probably seen in some of my videos if you're familiar. Um, the rotating assembly, very simple again, it's a GM crank. Uh, just a GM cast crank, nodular iron, uh, late model crank. Uh, the, the rods are actually not powder metal rods, they're just regular GM forged rods, just your regular 5.7 GM rods. Uh, and then the, the pistons are hyper eutectic pistons, again, just is just base, basic stuff. Uh, they are Summit Racing, I'll put the part number up there. Uh, what's nice about what's nice about these pistons? Uh, so you got to pay attention. To this is they do not have a reduced compression height. So this does not. This has a really uh, good uh, 1.560 compression height. Uh, they are just flat top pistons with uh, six cc valve reliefs. Uh, like I said I'll put the part number up. Oh, and the rods I forgot to mention were resized with ARP rod bolts. So they're just stock rods with ARP rod bolts resized, hyper eutectic pistons. Uh, GM cast steel crank and I used uh, just a regular Molly um, Hastings ring with a little extra ring gap. Uh, I put uh, 21 on the top ring, 23 on the second ring gap. So not a whole bunch of ring gap but a little extra because I was planning on maybe running boost which we did and uh, we'll talk about that in an upcoming video. So
let's talk about the cylinder head. So I'm not going to get into huge details about the cylinder heads uh, as far as hardware because I do have a video on it. You can go back and check it out. I'll try to put the link in the description. Um, but they're DNA aluminum uh, cylinder heads. I originally purchased them off Amazon. I believe they were $168 a casting back then a couple of years ago. Um, I did some port cleanup on them. I'll, I will post the flow numbers up. Uh, they end up flowing pretty well. I didn't do major porting to them because they were already honestly oversized for the 202 valve. The throats uh, it, it were, were already on the bigger side. So it was mostly just cleaned up and I kind of fixed the irregular port shape. The, um, I opened it up to a 1206 gasket and just kind of made it's an odd, it was an odd shape from, uh, from the get go. So I just kind of cleaned it up and I've talked, I'll talk, I talked about that more in another video and then flow tested it, but I'll just push, post the flow numbers up right now so you guys can get an idea. Uh, the camshaft. So the camshaft is another summit racing part, uh, summit racing, uh, part number, part number 8803. So this is a, a, a hydraulic roller cam made for these late model blocks. So it's got the cam retaining plate, uh, uh, 224, 232 at 50, 276, 281 on a 112 lobe separation, uh, which is, um, uh, has two degrees advanced built in. So it was installed on a 110 uh, intake lobe center. This guy's 550. Uh, lift on the intake 540 in the exhaust and I did run it with a 1.52 rocker ratio and that is uh, Was a comp cams roller like their, I think it's a magnum. I'll put the uh, part number just a magnum uh, Roller rocker timing chain is also another summit racing part number I would you guys should check this timing chain out. There's actually I've used this chain a few times it's actually a really nice chain very adjustable uh, summit racing double roller timing set I'll post the part number for that uh, and then lifters I also used are Summit Racing and they're their LS7 lifters and you might be wondering uh, what, why are you using LS7 lifters in these late model blocks that have their hydraulic roller cams. The lifters are interchangeable so you can run like the LS lifters which are the exact same uh, in this. So they were the um, GM LS7 um, roller lifters. I'll post a part number for that. So there's our valve train Summit Cam, uh, Summit lifters. Comp cam rocker arms, uh, push rods were from Howard's. They were a one piece uh, head gasket. So I used a GM head gasket, another part number you might want to write down, part number 14096405. That's a GM part number. That head gasket is thinner. So I think it's listed at 28 thousandths of an inch. I have yet to see one that's actually that thin. They usually come in between 32 and 35 thousandths of an inch when they're compressed. Uh, but still a little nicer, a little thinner than a, your average head gasket. And uh, it held up really well. So 30 plus dyno pulls, five or, five or so dyno pulls with boost. Uh, and we had no issues with head gaskets. So uh, they worked out really good. The intake was uh, the Edelbrock Air Gap 7501 dual plane air gap intake. With, uh, I slightly port aligned, matched it to a 1206 gasket. Uh, and just did some poor cleanup on it, but nothing major. These are these are a great intake. You can't really beat uh, for them for a dual plane intake. Um, so that's just a Edelbar 751. If you're on a budget, uh, you could you know possibly look at an offshore intake, uh, but don't expect the same quality as you would as an Edelbrock. This intake I got again. It was used. I already had it, uh, and it's just an awesome intake. So I used it and it worked out really good. Uh, the oil pan, if it's just a regular old oil pan. But I wanted to mention that I did use the factory GM windage tray, uh, but the oil pan is a five quart Summit Racing again oil pan, um, part number G3503. Uh, I used a high volume oil pump with a three quarter inch pickup. Um, so there you have it. So if I missed anything, which I probably did, just uh, just comment below and let and let me know, and I will uh, I'll be sure to to get to those comments. Um, but basically quick rundown is it's just the 355. It's about nine and three quarter to one compression, uh, summit racing roller cam, DNA performance heads. Uh, the nice part is it idles with lots of vacuum, 15, 16 inches without even a vacuum advanced hookup. Uh, so you, you know, there's chance, there's a chance you can even, you know, tune a little bit more vacuum advanced than that. So tons of power, uh, uh, tons of vacuum for power brakes. 
435 horsepower, right up to 6,300 RPM. So this would be tons of fun uh, in a stick car, or any car really, but it's just something you know that you want to you know really rev the gears out. Uh, and then 424 foot pounds of torque. And this was the hydraulic cam, so no valve adjustments, no messing around, and just reliability. This combo. Like proved itself reliable as it, it took a ton of abuse on the dyno, you know, a ton of uh, NA poles, just verifying things uh, and doing um, EFI tuning, and then obviously adding boost to it. Um, so the the combination just proved itself very reliable because uh, there's the dyno just puts a, a tremendous strain on it when it pulls it down. So uh, the, the thing worked flawlessly. Uh, um, the only real issue we had was with the distributor moving, so we ended up having to do a few more pulls to check some things. But let me know if I forgot anything, and I will be sure uh, to get to that. And on that note, too, this this stuff, just because we used it and you guys voted on, doesn't mean it's 100 percent perfect. So this is just an idea, and this gives you a good idea if you're building something similar. But um, there's room for improvement, in my opinion, as far as this combination as a 383 would be really nice. Pick up some more torque, a little bit more horsepower. Uh, you could probably expect at least, you know, 15 to 20 horsepower, I would think, uh, and probably maybe even 30 foot pounds of torque with a 383 stroker in this combination, uh, something like that. So you could, you know, you can play with it. This is I'm just giving the information to give you some base numbers, real deal dyno info without you know blowing smoke. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about quickly was the Dingle Ball 355. Uh, I'm itching to get that thing apart. I, I'm going to be putting a roller cam in. I'm currently talking with Howard's Camps about getting a custom grind for that thing. Similar to what the flat tappy cam was, but I'm going to make a few little adjustments. And I'm also thinking about maybe playing with the firing order. Uh, it kind of, ju kind of jumps up the price of the camshaft. But I was considering maybe putting an LS firing order uh, instead of the traditional Spolok Chevy. It's something I've never done before. Uh, but I don't know. I'm toying with that. So if you, a lot of guys have been asking about the Dingle Ball 355. So it is coming back. I just have to clear out some other projects and other engines that I'm building right now. Uh, so I will get to that and hopefully have it downloaded by the springtime is, is kind of the plan. So we'll see. Uh, again, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're not. And if you have any comments or questions, please, uh, please put them below. Thanks, guys.